this week at Starbase. Construction continues on Booster 17, Ship 34 receives its Raptor engines, and the new chopstick assembly is lifted and installed onto Tower 2. With the chopstick assembly and installation complete now, crews got right back to work expanding the tank farm infrastructure, fitting out the next launch tower, and pushing forward with a new flame trench. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week on Friday morning, another pair of new vaporizers were delivered to the launch site as SpaceX continues to build out the infrastructure for Starbase's second launch pad. About two hours later, the two large crawler cranes at the launch site worked together with one of the smaller cranes to begin lifting the first of the Tower 2 chopsticks. As the arm was raised into the air, the small crane and the SpaceX crane lowered the bottom of the arm to help rotate it into the upright position as the Buckner crane continued raising the top. As the arm was being finessed into position on the jig, the second arm began moving closer to the assembly area. By early afternoon, crews wrapped up the lift of the first arm, with it finally being maneuvered into position, properly aligned with the carriage and resting on the far beam of the jig. As the afternoon wore on, the SpaceX crane was connected to the top of the second chopstick. With an assist from some of the smaller cranes, the arm was lifted into the air, moved into position on the assembly jig, and mated to the carriage much quicker than the first arm. Then, as sunset approached, the king pin was lifted for installation. This pin goes into the top hinge, locking both arms to the carriage. The Drawworks traveling block will connect to the top of the pin, which will carry the weight of the entire chopsticks assembly, as well as whatever they are lifting. On Saturday morning, a concrete pump truck set up near Tower 2 at the launch site. Over the next several hours, the truck worked placing fresh concrete for the flame trench at the new pad. First thing on Sunday morning, both of the cranes were disconnected from the chopsticks, leaving the entire assembly resting on the jig, awaiting final install on the tower. That afternoon, crews began to work to re-rig the crane to be able to lift the entire combined assembly for that installation. Monday, rover camera caught booster raceway installation jigs being brought out of Mega Bay 1, rolled across the ring yard and back into Star Factory. Around that same time, the Buckter crane raised its hook a bit, taking the slack out of the rigging as it prepared for the lift. Back at the build site, Booster 17's pressurization piping was brought over to Mega Bay 1 from Star Factory and eventually taken inside the building as the assembly of this latest Super Heavy continues. A truckload of pipe sections and other hardware was delivered to the launch complex. The truck stopped just inside the D2 gate where crews got to work offloading it. Later, the SpaceX crane was seen slewing away from Tower 2 to clear the area for the upcoming chopsticks lift. Throughout the day, steady work continued inside the D2 gate at the launch complex. As hardware arrived, a crane was used to move and offload multiple prefabricated concrete culvert sections, new pipes, vaporizers, and other assorted hardware for eventual installation in this new Stage 0. A little bit before noon, the second booster pressurization pipe was lifted into Mega Bay for installation on Booster 17. And just a short time later, a pair of Raptors were moved across the back of the ring yard area and taken into Star Factory. As there shouldn't be a need for engines in the factory, it seems possible that there's a door between the factory and the right side of Mega Bay 2 that SpaceX was using in lieu of the large main door on the bay. By early afternoon, preparations were completed and the Buckner crane slowly lifted the Tower 2 chopstick assembly off the assembly jig. The arms were slowly maneuvered clear of the jig and towards the base of the launch tower. Partway through, the lift was paused briefly so that workers could manually open the claw-like ends of the carriage arms to allow for clearance around the tower during the installation process. As the assembly approached the base of the tower, tag lines were brought into the tower from the ends of the carriage to help guide it into alignment with the waiting skates. Once it was in position, crews got to work closing the ends of the carriage arms around the associated columns. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, the second to the last section of Ship 35 was brought out of Star Factory and taken into Mega Bay 2 for stacking operations. The section was followed just a short time later by the installation jig for the rocket's main methane transfer tube. 
Several hours later, the crane was spotted lifting the liquid oxygen header tank transfer tube over to the ship stacking area as well. Once the sun was up, deliveries of hardware to the expanding tank farm continued at the launch site. With the installation of the chopsticks on the second tower nearing completion now, the crane lowered them down to the hard stop, taking the tension off the rigging. Meanwhile, over at the D2 gate, four racks of high-pressure gas tanks were brought into the launch site and offloaded, likely as part of the second pad's deluge system. With the chopsticks now holding themselves onto the tower, workers disconnected the crane from the arms. As the morning rolled into afternoon at Starbase, additional deliveries of cryogenic piping and other assorted tank farm hardware rolled into the D2 gate for offload near the tank farm. Meanwhile, two concrete pump trucks set up on opposite ends of the launch complex and got right to work. One was in the area of the new deluge farm, while the other was behind pad A near the detention pond. Back over at the tank farm, a crane lifted a prefabricated section of cryogenic piping and moved it across the expansion area for installation. Over at pad B, workers wasted no time as they began to dismantle the chopstick assembly jig for shipment out of Starbase. By mid-afternoon, the concrete pump truck near the new deluge farm wrapped up its pour and packed up while the other one had progressed to working much closer to Tower 1. Later, crews were seen going up in a man lift and inspecting the back side of SpaceX's large launch site crane. At the base of the second launch tower, crews were working to install the metal roof over the top of the drawworks platform. Pieces were lifted onto the roof and then welded in place. Later that afternoon, crews continued to work on disassembling the chopstick assembly jig. At the tank farm expansion, a new prefabricated liquid oxygen pump skid was lifted and moved into position. A large steel structure with vanes for moving air was delivered to the launch site and taken around to the back side of the tank farm. And yet another concrete pour got underway at the launch site as another pump truck was spotted working on the tank farm expansion. First thing Wednesday morning, crews got right back to work taking apart the assembly jig to clear it from the launch site. On the launch tower, work also continued on the installation of the metal roof over the draw works. Over at the tank farm, the newly delivered vane steel structure was offloaded, rotated and moved into place. Meanwhile, a transporter loaded with counterweights arrived at the D2 gate and rolled into the launch complex. After SpaceX's large crane was hooked up to the final legs of the assembly jig, the leg was lifted and laid down for crews to dismantle. Crews continued to make steady progress on the roof for the base of the tower, with another pair of steel panels being lifted for installation. Later that morning, a rack of much smaller diameter compressed gas tanks arrived at the launch site. That afternoon, several more deliveries were made of various components to the tank farm area. These items included stands, valves, and prefabricated skids as the fast pace of the tank farm expansion continues unabated. Later, an additional three roofing panels were lifted to the tower base for installation as SpaceX works to protect the hardware underneath. Up the road at the build site, a trio of employees were spotted hand carrying some mysterious hardware out of Star Factory and into Mega Bay 1. That evening, workers were seen loading a slew of mystery items from Star Factory onto the back of a truck for shipment out of Starbase. On Thursday, several truckloads of structural steel arrived at the launch complex and were eventually taken over towards Pad B for offload. We're not quite sure what these are going to be used for, so we want to know what you think, so knock yourself out in the comments below. Later that morning, a single small section of roofing was removed from the base of the new launch tower to create an opening for the drawworks cable. A trench box was also spotted driving by Rover 2 at the launch site. These structures are used to support the walls of a trench temporarily to allow crews to work safely inside. Another large roofing panel was lifted to the base of Tower 2 for installation. Meanwhile, on the other side of the tower, crews were working to stage the pieces of the chopsticks assembly jig for loading and shipping out. The rigging straps were also spotted leaving the pad just a bit after noon. Throughout the rest of the afternoon, the tank farm area continued to see a flurry of activity with various equipment being moved around and installed including another prefabricated piping skid. 
The final roof panel for the base of Tower 2 was lifted and installed on the northeast side of the tower. That night, another load of steel arrived at the launch complex and was taken over towards Pad B for offload. Switching over to Florida on Saturday morning, the right arm of the chopsticks at Launch Complex 39A was swung open. This was presumably done manually as we have seen no indication that the hydraulic actuators have been installed yet. Late that afternoon, a short fall of Gravitas was towed out to sea in support of booster recovery for the Starlink Group 12-7 launch. On Monday, Booster 1083 wrapped up its dockside processing and was laid onto an awaiting transporter for the return trip to SpaceX's Roberts Road facilities. That afternoon, a Falcon 9 Booster 1076 launched its 20th mission as it took off from Space Launch Complex 40 with 21 Starlink satellites for the Group 12-7 mission. First thing Wednesday morning, Doug returned to Port Canaveral docks carrying both the recovered fairing halves from Monday's Starlink launch. Several hours later, a short fall of Gravitas was brought in to join Doug at the docks carrying Booster 1076 from that same mission. That afternoon, the Falcon 9 first stage was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for processing. That night, Booster 1073 lifted off on its 21st and final mission as it launched its Spainsat NG-1 mission from Launch Complex 39A. This rare expendable launch sent its payload, a communication satellite, on its way to geostationary transfer orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.